In this video, we're going to take a look at adding details to cylinders. You've probably realized while working with subdivision surfaces that when you add details to anything that is curved, you begin to see artifacts on the mesh. Even upon rerouting your edges, they cause all sorts of pinching. So I'm going to show you how to go about adding details without running into shading artifacts. So I'm going to start off by creating a cylinder and i've got eight words on the cylinder and i'm just deleting the caps because i'm not going to need it for this we're just going to be adding details to the surface the cylindrical surface that is so i'm just adding in two loops here and i'm going to subdivide this so i just give it about two divisions and that's not enough resolution now the key to adding details is to add enough resolution to your mesh I'm just going to bump that up to about four levels and accept the apply it. Now I have sufficient resolution. So I'm just going to delete one half of this and I'm just going to work on the other half and then mirror it. So now I'm just going to pull out the knife tool and I'm going to start uh, cutting in some details. Now, don't worry too much about the topology in the beginning. We can fix that up later and we can reroute edges later on. So now I've just gone ahead and bevel that little cut that I made there. And I'm just going to also mirror this. And now I will just inset this detail. Once I've done that, I will extrude along the normals. So I accidentally extruded individual faces when I was actually trying to extrude along the normal. So there we go. Now I'm going to insert that detail again. Now you'll notice that I've also got some triangles there. But if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Like if there isn't going to be any artifacts caused by those triangles, then there's no problem in having them there. So I've gone ahead and added a new subdivision surface modifier. And you can see that there's no artifacts, even though we've actually got triangles on this mesh. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut in more details. Now I'm just going to select a couple of faces and I'm going to extrude them inward. So just insetting that detail to ensure that it holds up and it doesn't end up collapsing when I do activate the subdivision surface modifier. So now I've just flattened that using the loop tools after extruding it in and I've inserted it again. Now I'm just selecting that row and I'm insetting it so that the details hold up when I apply the modifier. So I've just cut in a little slot there. And you can see that um, we aren't having any deformation. So the key to this is that you should have enough resolution on your mesh when you add details and that way you will not have any kind of uh, bulging that you would notice when you work with low poly cylinders so do not add details to low poly cylinders what you want to do is ensure that you have enough resolution then work on the bigger details you're going to add and then again subdivide apply your subdivisions and add more details and you want to ramp it up like so now I'm just going to punch in a few holes. So using the loop tools here again. Now the loop tools are not found by default. So you will have to go to your preferences and search for the add-on loop tools. And you need to enable it to be able to use this. So now I'm just going ahead and doing pretty much the same thing that you saw me do earlier. Just extruding things and insetting the faces to ensure that it holds the details.
So pulling out the knife tool and looking to add some more details. So just cutting across the mesh there. Don't worry about the triangles. So I'm going ahead and selected that edge I just cut and I'm beveling it. So now I'm just going to insert that face again. So same rigmarole and just push that in. So just thinking about how I want to add this detail. And you'll notice that when we have enough resolution, those triangles aren't causing that much of a problem. I will be adding a material over this to test it out and see what's causing pinching and what's fine. So I wasn't too happy with that detail, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that and try to add that someplace else. So just selecting a couple of faces there and again repeating the same process. I'm just cutting in a slot here. And you'll see that once we activate the subdivision surface modifier, the details are holding up pretty well. So now again pulling out the knife tool and making a few more cuts here. So I'm just selecting whatever I don't need and I'm just going to get rid of the faces. So I'm just trying to dissolve those edges but I had the faces selected. I'm just going to ensure that I'm selecting the edges. And I'm going to dissolve them. Then I'm going to extrude this uh, thing that I cut in here. Now don't model with your sub surf modifier active. I keep making that mistake, but don't do that. So I'm just going to align this to view. And I'm just going to play around with this detail and see what works. So this is a very straightforward process. It's not complicated at all. You just need to ensure you have enough mesh density to support your details. So let's go ahead and add that subsurf modifier and see how this looks. And it's all holding up pretty well. So let's go ahead and add some more details. Now I'm going to work on a much larger detail here. So the process is fairly straightforward. Just cut in your pattern and select your faces, inset them, and then just extrude. Now be careful when you, especially when your mesh is this dense, be careful when you're insetting, you don't wanna overlap faces, then you're gonna start to suffer from shading problems. So just be mindful of that. So just checking my details from time to time to see how it's holding up. And you should check from time to time just to make sure everything is holding up. So now I'm just going to select some faces and extrude them. So just ensuring that I'm extruding that detail properly. Now the shading wasn't right because I had simple selected instead of capital clock. So So 
So now we got a whole bunch of interesting details here and they all look pretty good. So I'm just going to hold, add a, a loop in the middle of that just to ensure that the detail is a little bit more crisp. And so you can add control loops to ensure that your details look more crisp, but um, just be careful because they can cause artifacts. Be very mindful with the way you apply your supporting edges especially with curved surfaces because it's going to cause pinching real easy so i'm just ch checking the surface to ensure that there are no kinks in it so now i'm going to switch to vert mode and just select a few edges and these are going to be some holes that i'm going to punch into this surface So I've just beveled that vert and I will insert that. So I just wanted a bigger bevel there. And now I'm just inserting it. Insetting it, I mean. And I'm just going to push that in. So everything's looking good. Uh, I just noticed that my extrusion wasn't done properly. So if I switch to the top view, I'll notice that the extrusion was a little bit wonky. So I'm gonna go in there and fix that. Just ensure that I extruded along the normals. Again, add the subsurf modify on and it's sort of slowing things down so i've gone ahead and inset those faces now and those holes that i punched in look good so now i'm just going to go ahead and select one half of the mesh delete it and then mirror the details over Now I'm just going to cut in a few more edges to redirect the flow in order to create the detail that I want. And then I'm just going to select the entire row of edges and bevel those. So just in setting that and then going to extrude that along the normals again just gonna fix the edges right at the top before I go ahead and do that so I've gone ahead and extruded that but this time I'm not going to be insetting those faces because I want a much softer detail. So now if you'll notice, we've got a much softer detail compared to the other ones. So when we, so things just went a little crazy there. My tablet was acting funny and I ended up selecting multiple axes and the bisect as well. So I chose not to inset that detail so that I have a much softer result. Insetting things will ensure that they remain crisp. Going ahead and selecting a few more faces. And I'm just thinking about adding some more details. So now I am extruding this and repeating the same process. Just trying out different details just to see how they hold up. 
so again it's all looking fine no artifacts in sight just going to poke that face and i'll bevel the vert in the middle and without any insetting i'm just going to extrude that detail just to see how a softer detail will look so i don't really like how that looks so i'm going to go ahead and inset those faces so let's go ahead and add one last detail and let's try something a little bit different this time so now that i've cut in my detail i'm going to push that in now you'll see that um, the detail isn't holding up like i wanted to so i'm going to do something a bit blasphemous and i'm just going to cut in edges without really worrying about the topology and you will see that doesn't really cause much of an issue because our mesh is so dense so what i'm going to do is pull out the knife tool and i'm just going to cut right across the faces and i'm not worried about you know having end gons and whatnot now of course you want to come back and try to fix all this if it's causing shading issues and this will definitely create shading issues but i wanted to hold up those details in the corners so i went ahead and cut those edges across the face now you'll notice that there isn't much in terms of artifacts there and you will notice if i add a high enough contrast material you will be able to see some pinching so you will want to go in and fix those kind of um if you do cut in edges across the faces the way i just did you'll want to go in and fix that later so now i'm just going ahead and adding a material to this and examining how all the details hold up and so far there isn't any problem it's shading quite well i don't see any artifacts and so this is how you go about adding details to a cylindrical surface without um, having all those you know unnecessary bumps and pinches in the surface of the mesh so again to reiterate and to drive the point home you need to have sufficient resolution if you choose to add details to a cylindrical surface now once you have added all your details you'll need to do a little cleanup now i'm not going to bore you with doing all the cleanup so that's it for this video thanks for watching if you've learned something give the video a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more videos like this then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss an upload